Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Life's been a bit hectic. Uh, but we're back and we're going to take a look at Touch OSC and kind of cleaning up your template. We're going to work with some local messages to hide some objects. So keeping your template organized can be tough, especially if you have a lot of different things that you're trying to control. For example, I've got a main template that I'm using that has about five different pages. And on each one of those different pages, I have different uh, objects, controls, faders, things that I'm working with, depending on what I'm doing. Now that's only for some work that I do. I also have different templates for different work that I do. But one way to keep this organized, if you have something that's say a mixer, or a synthesizer that you're controlling, uh, you could use local messages to kind of create different layers and not have to deal with a pager. But pagers are great, but let's go ahead and take a look at how you could do this. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is having a pop-up object. So we're here in Touch OSC. You can see I have my iPad connected and we're all set and good to go. So let's go ahead and add a button. And we're gonna add a fader and a label. So what we're gonna do is make this label appear when we push the button. So first off, let's take the fader and we can get rid of these messages because we don't need them for right now. But let's go ahead and add a local message and we're going to target the label. So now when we use the fader, you can see it is showing the value of the fader in the label. That's great, but maybe we don't want this information showing the whole time. So we're going to take our button here and we're going to get these and add a local message. And again, we're going to target the label. And what we're gonna do is under target, we're gonna change text to property and visible because now what's gonna happen when we touch this button, it shows our little value there. So this can be a great way to show your value of your fader if you need it. Perhaps you want uh, the value of the name. If you're using an OSC message and you don't want to have every name to every uh, fader underneath at all times, I don't know why, but you could, you could hide that. You could also have other objects hidden. You could hide a button. You could hide a box. You could hide an XY. It doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a variety of different things you could do depending on the type of work that you but what I like about this is that visibly, I can kind of see what it is that we're looking at and what we're trying to do with the label. So I don't really need to see that all the time, but if you really wanted to see exactly what's the number that you're putting out, and you're not looking at your DAW, you could use this type of label. It's been a while since I've done these videos because I've been kind of hectic, busy with uh, running an opera festival and all sorts of different composing gigs, but Wisconsin's finest, New Glarus. God bless him. All right, let's take a look at number two. So let's say you have a lot of different faders taking up your template, uh, but you want to touch a button and then have another pop-up that provides just a couple different objects. Uh, you could use a pager, like I said before, but in this situation, we're gonna use local messages. So let's add quite a few different faders. Gonna line these up, copy paste, and let's paste another set, taking up all this space, and that's why we need this. And let's make these a different color for right now. And then let's make a new button. Let's make this one blue. This is gonna correspond with all of these different faders. So right now there are no messages on these faders, so they're not doing anything, but you can see we can impact them. They are working on our template. So now let's add a group. Now this group, we're gonna use this to cover all of our faders. Now, if you're having an instance where that isn't working out, you can see your tree and what is on top. So, you know, if your group was underneath, let's say you uh, right click this, arrange, and you move backwards. If you do it enough times, eventually you'll show that you are behind 
or in front of different objects. For this situation, to hide things, you want this to be in front of your faders. So wherever that has to be in your template. So let's take our blue button and we're going to get rid of these and add a local message again. And just like before, we're going to target our object here and we're going to impact its visibility. So now if I was to push that, when I hold the button down, it's showing up. But we want this to remain. So let's take our button here and change it from momentary to toggle press. So now when I push it, you can see that whole grid thing comes up, the whole box comes up. But let's take this box, I don't want it to be gray, so we're gonna take the color, and we're gonna bring the red, green, and blue down so it's basically invisible. So we can see our faders, everything's fine, and then we can hide them. So now let's double click into this group and we can add something else. Let's say we wanted another set of faders, a label, and then we wanted, I don't know, four buttons, so why not? Then I'm gonna add another label and another button. And what I'm gonna do just for this instance here, I'm gonna call this OSC2 and this OSC1. So now if I double click in this gray area and I get out of it, you can see here on the template, I've got my faders, things I'm controlling, and then I hit this blue button and I've got a new set of objects that I can interact with. So perhaps this is oscillator one and we're changing different effects on our synthesizers oscillator. You know, perhaps you have a toggle going here to do a test sound that you're sending. Something like this in your template is super helpful for live performance. Now when I'm working in my studio and I'm just dealing with my own, uh, you know, composing work, I don't really need things to be uh, instantaneous, you know, I have a few seconds to spare, but if you are in a live situation, perhaps you need super quick access to a lot of different information at once, and you don't want to have to deal with a pager. This is a great way to kind of keep yourself in the same spot that you've been working and just have something pop up right on top. of it. Okay, let's look at one other way to clean up your template. So let's take this mess of stuff, all these, and we're going to move these out of the way here. And let's add label and a fader and let's make these the same size and let's duplicate this copy paste and we're going to turn this one yellow and because we've already used red today we'll make this one a little more orange and now we need a button to control these so let's add a button we'll make this one kind of pinky purple So in a real world situation, you probably don't have a lot of space. So you would probably want your button to be about the same size as your fader, so it could be right underneath. So we'll do that in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to have a fader pop up basically on top of another fader so that we can send two different signals. So this first fader is going to be our master or our volume, whatever you wanna call it. And then this other one is gonna be our reverb channel. Now something I often do when I'm composing in my DAW is I've got a track that is for the virtual instrument or the live instrument, and then I have a second track that is routed from the original instrument that is just the reverb. That way I can really control that. And I can control where it is in the panning, and I could also you know, separate them, could do all sorts of different things. Uh, but this is a great way that I like to deal with reverb. So in using this method in your template, it's easy to jump back and forth between those and not have to have your template with a variety of different tracks when a lot of them are part of the same instrument. Perhaps it's a bus track and you just want that to pop up as opposed to have each individual track next to it at the same time. So we have no messages that are going out of these because we're just in the DAW, but what we're gonna do is take our controller here and let's get rid of these messages for right now so they're out of the way and let's add a local message. And similar to what we did before, we're gonna take the eyedropper to this fader here and this is going to be on rise 
and then our target property is visible. And then let's add another local message. Open that up. Again, target the fader. This is going to be on fall. And again, this is going to be visible. So now what happens if I touch the button, you can see the fader pops up when I'm pushing the button down. So same as we had before, we're going to take this and we're going to turn it from momentary into a toggle press. And we're going to replicate that process for the label. So let's add another local message. Whoops, that one we've already done. Let's add actually two at the same time because that's kind of easier. And we are going to target the label in both of these. And then again, this is going to be rise. This one's going to be fall. And then we're going to target the property visible. So now when we use our toggle, it's disappearing. Perfect. So now we're going to make this appear when this disappears or vice versa. So we have all of these messages here. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on this button messages. Let's copy local messages and then click back on this button and then paste local messages. And you can see we now have eight messages, but they duplicated. So we're going to have to reset them. So right now, this is to fader 14. Let's select our yellow fader and we have to change the property back to visible. Same for this one. That's the fall message. It's going to be back to visible. And then this is for our reverb label. If you were to push the button now, they would both disappear because they're both being basically the same message. Uh, for two different faders. So what we have to do is change the scale. So for these last four, let's go one, zero. And now you can see that when you push the button, it's kind of oscillating between the two. That's great. So now what we're gonna do is take our volume and let's bring this to the front. And let's bring this over. It doesn't really matter who's in front, just whichever one you want to be. Uh, but what I want is the volume. And it looks like these are just a hair too much to the left. So I'm going to move that over. And now when I hit that button, I go back and forth between the reverb and the volume. So I can control the volume. And then let's say I want to check the reverb a little bit lower. And everything is still set. And I'm still sending both messages. So in a real world situation, it would probably look like this. This would be a little bit smaller so that you could have multiple of these next to each other for multiple tracks. And for each one, you can kind of go back and forth. Perhaps these instruments have a ton of reverb. Now, if you're in a situation where the toggle is, uh, you know, looks like it's on when it should be off, you can change that from rise to fall. You could also play with the color to change with whatever fader or object, or whatever you have up front. So if you wanted to change these from being on for uh, the volume and off for the reverb, you could reverse which uh, messages are happening. Because you see we did the uh, rise and fall for the different volumes and then the different scale for the reverb. So you could switch those up. But let's say you wanted to really show that there was something different going on besides just the light that's popping up. You could also add another local message to your button. So this last one down here, you're going to target its own button. And then for property, we're going to change the color and let's change the green. So now when we push it, it kind of comes up to its own yellow. Now to make this all match, you'd have to play around with your own template and make sure everything's set up for the colors that you're using, but it's definitely doable to have your colors coincide with whatever your different faders are. 
So hopefully using these tricks with local messages and hiding different objects helps clean up your template and opens up a whole new way for you to kind of control your different instruments or your DAW. So hopefully you learned something today. You can like the video and subscribe to the channel. Lots more to cover here. It's a kind of endless pit of touch OSC and music technology software. And be sure to check out the Facebook group and the Discord group because there's all sorts of interesting information and templates that people are sharing there. So also, I've gotten a lot of questions about things that I've already answered or shown in other videos. So if you perhaps use Presona Studio One and you see a video on GarageBand or Logic, you're not watching that video, there's probably something in that video that could help you with your template. But if you don't want to watch a whole video, you can also go to my website, timcorpus.net, and you can see a full listing of all the different subjects that I've covered uh, in these video series on Touch OSC and other music software like Finale. And finally, if you really like what you're seeing here and you really want to help me out, uh, I do all of this for free. I'm just happy to help. Uh, but you can buy me a coffee through the website below and support this channel. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.